Hello and welcome to the thermal module tutorial video. We will be covering a couple things in this video. Uh, adding devices to the database, so new thermal characteristics devices, and we will also discuss aspects of the thermal equivalent circuits that are accessed with the thermal module. This circuit is a simple inverter with the made with the Infineon six pack IGBT that can be found in the examples folder. Um, here we see the DC bus has been defined here on these inputs. Uh, the ports at the bottom are the gating signals. Here are the uh, ports from the legs of the inverter going into this watt meter and then to this uh, load here. And at the top, there are four more ports. These are the switching and conduction losses of this six pack. They've been broken down into four separate signals. Two of them are the switching and conduction losses of the switch, and two of them are the switching and conduction losses of the diode. And they've been defined here, as you can see. They are coming into this node here, where the, in this case, the diode losses are being totaled. And then this resistor is actually the thermal equivalent impedance from the junction of the diode to the case. And same, this is the thermal equivalent junction impedance of the switch to the case. And then these are then going into being totaled by this node and going and being dumped into ambient temperature of 75 degrees Celsius, which based on this node here is a 10 liter per minute flow rate heatsink. Interesting things to note about this circuit. You can add capacitors or any other component in here really, and voltages define the temperature and the amp meters in these cases are measuring watts. So what happens with this circuit is, see we have these voltmeters here, these measuring the node voltages of, of this, of, of the junction of the diode and the junction of the, of the switch. This Junction temperature is actually also being used by the thermal module device to help with the model losses. As you'll see when we import a new device later on, that the junction temperatures is being used to pick the right loss characteristic points, as most of these things are thermally dependent. So we can quickly simulate the circuit. And here we have the switching and conduction losses of the diode on the top here. We can see the switching and conduction losses of the switch in the second screen here. And we can see the total losses in, in this screen. And here we, is the power uh, going to the load. So if we want efficiency calculations, we could use losses here and the uh, load current, load, load power here. And down here, here's the, the node voltages from the junction of the diode and of the IGBT. And so this is being used to pick the right, the right loss characteristics, the thermally dependent loss characteristics by the thermal module. So let's go ahead and, and add a new device. To do that, we go to Utilities, and we click on this one here, which is Device Database Editor. Here we see some of the devices that are already in the library, and we're gonna add a new IGBT. So we click on the IGBT symbol here, this red one, a new IGBT pops up there as we hover over. And here we have now an opportunity to pick the manufacturer and add the other parameters of the new device. The device I will be adding is from IXYS, and I'll just pull over the data sheet. So I'll just type in some of the new parameters here. Uh, here we can choose if it's going to be a discrete device, um, a dual device, or a six-pack in this case. The voltage rating is 1200 volts, current 160 amps, and the junction temperature is 125 degrees Celsius. And we can just double check that here. There's 125 degrees Celsius. Okay, great. Next things to add are some of these curves. So I'm going to add the saturation voltage versus collector current curves. To do that, we click on the edit button here, and this wizard pops up. Now we need to click on the add curve. 
Now the dialog box here is describing uh, what to do next. Go and find the applicable curve in the data sheet. Here it is figure one. Um, this has the 25 degrees Celsius junction temperature curve. And you either need to print screen, or in my case, I'm going to use the uh, snapshot function of the of Adobe Reader. And I'm just going to copy and paste this section of the data sheet to the clipboard. And the snapshot tool just does that automatically. OK, so that's that snapshot is now on the clipboard. I'm just going to go to next now. And that data from the clipboard is, is now loaded. If there's more data on the on, on the clipboard, you could scroll around and look for it here now. But uh, it's only only that section uh, is from the snapshot tool. So click on next. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to define the limits of the figure. So we're going to right click and then left click in the center there. And then I'm going to right click and I'm going to left click there and we can see now this faint blue line is now overlaid on top of the outer limits here when we've done that we click next and now we need to define some of the other aspects of, of the figure uh, first thing we're going to check is to make sure that the x-axis and y-axis match up and in this case we can see that the collector current is actually on the y-axis so uh, we need to invert this here so we have now the saturation voltage on x and collector on y the limits now uh, the x-axis is going from 0 to 5 volts we'll just type that in the y-axis is going from 0 to 300 amps suffix uh, we can use that if we need a pico or nano or micro and we can also then put in uh, uh, change the either axis to a logarithmic scale if needed but uh, we don't need any of those in this case I'm also going to go down here and I'm going to type in the value for the junction temperature and I'm also going to go to other test conditions and I'm going to type in 15 volts because we'll trace out the 15 volt curve here and just click OK and then we go to next so here we can see 0 to 5, 0 to 300 everything looks about right and what we're going to do now is input the data points for this curve we're going to trace it out so I'm going to right click and then left click right click and then left click right click left click and the 15 volt curve is is the second one here so it's going to come out so we'll just sort of trace the middle of this curve as it comes out and you can see as I click them there's a pink line that's being drawn and traced out over the section that I've covered so there that's now done click next and there it is that was relatively straightforward so now what I want to do is I want to add the 125 degrees Celsius curve which is actually on a different scale even uh, handily the wizard uh, allows us to deal with that quite easily so I'm going to click add curve here Again, it's going to display the curve on the graph screen, which is over here, and I'm going to need to copy it to the clipboard. Again, using the snapshot function from Adobe Reader. So that's now on the clipboard. Click Next to load it up. And so here's the 125 degrees Celsius curve. We'll just call it a Next. So now I need to define the limits, 125 degrees Celsius. We'll click here, we'll click here, and we go to next. I actually skipped ahead one too many. If we do that, all we need to do is go, just go back one step, and we can now adjust things like these limits here. I, as I neglected to change the X limit from 5 volts from the original one to 6. So now that that's corrected we can just go ahead to the next screen here now we can see that that's now appropriate it's up to six and that's 300 all we have to do is trace out the points again 
Again, the 15 volt curve. 15 volt curve. So we'll just click along at the bottom here. Now, say you were to misclick something and draw the curve out completely wrong. Not, not a big deal. Just go back up to the top here and just delete those out. Click refresh. Yeah, so we'll just start from where it was uh, appropriately set. Clicking out again. If you zoom in too far, I just click away a little bit and then click back on the region of interest. All relatively straightforward. Almost finished with this one here. And there we go. And here we can see both curves now overlaid on top of each other. Both now are, are, are inputted, and we can see that it's you know zero to six volts here, zero to three hundred amps. So what used to be two curves on two separate figures with different scales are now inputted in appropriately, and we can just click OK and there we can see them nicely inputted in the database. Now I'll just go ahead and add all the other ones and you've added now a new device to the database and you can do comparisons between device to device. And that now concludes the video. Thanks for watching.